Hello students, this is Triparna Chattopadhyay. Hope you are all well. Today I am going to address the second semester general English students and I would like to discuss about the essay in your syllabus written by Charles Lamb that is Dream Children A Reverie. I would like to discuss about Dream Children as an essay. Dream Children A Reverie popularly known for convenience as Dream Children is an essay by Charles Lamb. Essay is a composition usually in prose except say uh, Alexander Pope's moral essays in verse which may be of only a few hundred words or uh, in some exceptions of a book length and which discusses either formally or informally a topic or a variety of topics. It is one of the most flexible and adaptable of all the literary forms and it differs from a treatise or dissertation. That means essay is not a research paper or a thesis work as it is not a systematic and complete exposition and as it is addressed to a general reader rather than to a specialized audience that means the research workers or the research scholars. So essays are meant to address the mass, the common readers who can gain some knowledge on a particular subject when the writer writes about that topic. The essay discusses its subject or the topic in a non-technical fashion and often with a liberal use of such devices such as say anecdote, striking illustration and humor to argument its appeal. It should in this connection be taken into account that a personal essay or literary essay is not like a formal essay. You need to remember there is a basic difference between personal essays and formal essays or an article. These formal essays are impersonal in nature. The author writes as an authority in the personal essays or at least as highly knowledgeable and expounds the subject in an orderly way. In the informal or familiar or personal essay as this one is, I mean the dream children is, the author assumes a tone of intimacy with his audience as if he is sharing his personal experience like he is telling a tale to the audience and it tends to deal with everyday things rather than with public affairs or specialized topics and the writing process is very relaxed, self-revelatory and sometimes whimsical fashion. That means sometimes the coherence is lost. It is written in a whimsical, haphazard manner. Essay was first written or introduced by Montaigne and Bacon made the genre essay famous in England. Charles Lamb's Essays of Elijah, which includes this essay Dream Children are to speak in a word really charming. They reveal Charles Lamb as the man yet they are not historical. They are completely personal in nature. That means they share Charles Lamb's personal experiences in these essays. The autobiographical elements enhance the charm of the essays, of course, because the readers can relate with the essayist Charles Lamb and the imaginative nature of the essayist enriches the appeal. The essays are mostly imaginary, they are magical in tone and which the reader really enjoys while reading. They are not like the formal essays which are very strict, precise, particular to the topic in nature. 
but this essay the dream children or the personal essays other personal essays written by charles lamb are charming are pleasant to read while reading the essays of lamb the specifically the personal essays from the essays of elia we are not sure as to whether we are reading letters some personal letters or short stories or diaries of a person or whether we are listening to tales told by an author specifically they do not belong to any category actually but they combine the traits of all that means they contain the essence of personal letters or say short stories or maybe the memorable pages of someone's personal diary or they are considered as fairy tales so they are lesser in essence as essay and more like personal letters dream children as the essayist himself says is a reverie it comes from the pain of a man whose desire for a family failed owing to strange circumstances and that's why it's a reverie it's a dream it's an ideal state which he couldn't reach in reality but tried to reach in his dreams insanity was a familial affection of the lambs lamb charles lamb's own sister she was insane and charles lamb personally had some a uh, fit of mental illness and he had to spend about 6 months in a mad house that is quite striking while he had to remain in charge of his insane sister mary who had killed their mother with a knife and was about to kill their father as well his love affair with ann simmons whom he had met during a visit to hertfordshire where his grandmother mrs field kept the house of the plumers ended up in the girl marrying a pawnbroker named bartram and that was the tragedy of charles lamb's personal life that he had to look after his insane sister mary who killed his mother and tried to kill uh, their father as well and that's why he gave up with the relationship with his uh, uh, beloved and simmons and that girl and simmons she got married to a pawnbroker whose name was bartram and where did he meet and simmons at his grandmother mrs fields house and uh, i am just uh, telling you this personal event from lamb's life because dream children is a personal essay and you can relate the narrative with this incident of charles personal life the, uh, the narrative is very close to this incident dream children is a wish fulfillment in an unreal world that means the wishes which could not be fulfilled in reality they flourish in the dream in the unreal world in the magical world of dream they seems they seem to be fulfilled in dreams it is a dream that never came true in reality but it narrates the haunting dream of the essayist to have two children a boy and a girl who would cuddle up to him to listen to his tales about their great grandmother and their uncle the character of mrs field the grandmother has a real basis the name is real and real also is the fact that she kept a house in a distant place as i had told you just earlier while the name of the place is given as norfolk not hertfordshire lamb enriches the tale about his grandmother with an elaborate and fanciful description of the house she kept and as the tale was fanciful it inflamed the fancy of the listeners john and alice who are john and alice john and alice are that boy and girl 
who were present in Lamb's dream and he considered them as his own children. Lamb selects the names of his dream children intelligently. Why? Because Alice reminds us of the one of the Alice in Wonderland, a dream world. And John bears relation with his brother John. The name of Lamb's brother was John. Lamb literally intermixes facts with fancy. Facts from his personal life and fancy or dream which couldn't be fulfilled in reality. Thus, when he speaks of John as a child, he makes the character so fanciful with all his lustiness that the tale warms up the children. But soon he gets him dead to make the children fall a crime. When he tells the children about Mrs. Field, their great grandmother, saying how tall, upright and graceful she was, how in her youth she was esteemed to be the best dancer in the locality, the children's fan Sosa, only to be subdued a moment later when he tells them how she fell a victim of the cruel disease, cancer. While the homophonic words dancer and cancer arouse our laughter and then arouse our ache, our heart melts for her. As Lamb speaks how she saw the apparitions of two infants gliding up and down the great staircase near the hall where she slept, John felt frightened but posed to be courageous. The narrative effect gains momentum as Lamb now and then describes the reactions of the children because when you tell a fairy tale to your children, you must not miss their expressions, how they are enjoying the tale, what expressions, what gestures they are giving. They enhance the effect of the story. Lamb slips into a dreamy world when he tells the children how he enjoyed strolling about in the garden, roaming here and there uh, within the trees, vines, or injury, and the elaborate description of the fish, fish ponds with a numerous fishes. Lamb's dream transports himself to an idyllic world. The romantics love to traverse. Lamb's world is a romantic ideal world. The house of the plumers in Hertfordshire, which actually in reality Mrs. Field kept and which Lamb visited, had all that Lamb speaks of. But what was not there is the charm that the essay creates. He creates a charm so magical that really enhances the charm of that Hertfordshire mansion. The marble statues were there in the real house, but it is Lamb who makes them turn alive or himself turn statuesque. That is the quality of his writing. After finishing the long description of the house of Mrs. Field, and of their uncle John and of their mother Alice. Finally, Lamb closes the essay marvelously, describing how he wakes up from the dream, from the reverie, how the children grew suddenly fainter to his view, receding and receding, going far away, and finally shocking him to the truth that they are not the children of Anne Simmons and Charles Lamb, but of Anne and Bertram, Anne and his real husband, not of Charles Lamb. We can feel the sadness that fills Lamb's heart when the children are made to utter that they call Bertram their father, not Charles Lamb and they must wait upon the tedious shores of Leith before they can have an existence and a name. That means Leith is the river of forgetfulness and they are waiting 
by the side of this river till they get an existent they are dream children they are non existent lamb gives a twist to the spelling of the name bartram for obvious reasons but in spite of all fairness he cannot conceal the pining of his heart the aching of his heart the sadness the sorrowful heart the essay ends like kids ode to a nightingale where the poet turns back from a dreamland by the waking effect of the word forlorn this essay closes like the sunset when the variegated colors of the twilight gradually merge and mingle and fade into the darkness of the night the fairy day of the dream is gone and melting into the darkness of the reality if an essay aims at giving pleasure to the reader in an informal manner of chatting brushing a fanciful coat over the real world of facts dream children is a marvelous specimen of this personal essay genre the essay is essentially a soliloquy it's kind of a monologue which only charles lamb or the narrator is uttering and that is the essence of the essay its appeal has lasted more than 200 years lamb wrote it and we are reading and enjoying and relating with this essay till now but that is a fraction of time these more than 200 years are just a fraction of the time and it will continue to appeal to the reader public with feeling hearts it will keep touching their hearts with its happiness and melancholy with his pathos and humor students now i would like to request you to write an answer on this topic dream children as an essay or a romantic essay or a reflection of charles lamb's personal life and please write this answer and send it to me i will check it uh, so that's all for today thank you hope you will enjoy this video hope it will be really helpful to you and thank you once again